So um, this is for anyone who's a Libra sun, moon, rising, or Venus, or um, if you're in a relationship with a Libra, because this is the couple's love reading for the month of July. Now, one thing I want to mention is if you're the Libra, you're going to want to look at um, your moon sign because moons correlate to emotions. And when we're talking about love relationships, emotions are super important. Okay, so here we go. Libra couples for the month of July 2017. How are you seeing yourself in the context of your relationship this month? Um, okay, so maybe your relationship hasn't been going, um, you know, a million percent awesome. And maybe that's why you're watching this video. But I feel like it's for circumstances outside of your control. Now you're looking at the past, okay? You're thinking backwards at, to, at the things that are good for that have been good in that relationship. What are the sustaining qualities? What are the reasons why you fell in love? And that's a really good thing. And if you continue to do that, things are going to change really quickly and for the better within the context of your relationship. Now, how is your partner seeing you? And... Um, and seeing you within the context of this relationship in the month of July. Now, they're going back and forth between feeling particularly, um, like, kind of like, okay, so there's two different things here. Feeling down is kind of one of them, but more it's just like, we don't have a lot to be excited about recently. It's, it's kind of maybe boredom, but um, they're not worried about the relationship because, you know, everything ebbs and flows. I mean, even, you know, in our daytime, like in a week, you know, one day we're having the best day ever. The next day is kind of shitty. It, everything ebbs and flows. And that's kind of um, how they're seeing the relationship. And so they're not worried about it. They're not um, particularly concerned that it might just be kind of a lull. Now, the thing is, Particularly if your partner is a fire sign, I would get um, more Aries and Leo than Sagittarius in this scenario, and they don't have to be. But they're just um, not feeling particularly confident and good about themselves. And so when we're talking about, hey, um, what are you know the circumstances of the relationship, and when we said that this is maybe something outside of your control, it might not have been an actual circumstance. It could be that your partner just doesn't have a load of confidence right now and so it's affecting the relationship because of their mood. So here's the thing. It says, you know, when we were talking about you, looking back at the past fondly and the things that were really great, remembering why you fell in love, all of those things. Now they are challenged to do the same. So how can you do that for them? Well, you can remind them, hey, you know what? Initially, I liked you because you were super handsome and I know you gained a little bit of weight, but I still think you're the most handsome person on the planet things like that. Or um, remember how we used to do A, B, and C? I would still love to do those things with you. You're still my favorite person to go surfing with or whatever the hell. Oh, sorry. I dropped a card on the floor. Um, it says that right now for a lot of, um, for a lot of you, you might not have a really good balance in regards to your work, your life, your friendships. Um, and that's not entirely <laughs> within your control, but um, you're kind of trying to control it, okay? And so emotionally, that could be um, a challenge for you and your relationships as well. So what should you avoid this month in your relationship and in your communication with your partner in order to um, get things moving towards more positive? Um, what they're saying that you should avoid this month is... Um, Okay, so I'm going to pull another card. Okay, so some of you are in this position right here. And I'm getting this card a couple different ways, so I'm going to be cautious in a general reading. For, um, you know, personal readings are often a better way to do things related to love because it'll be very precise for you and your situation. But I'm going to try my best to read this um, in these three different ways. Okay, so number one, some of you, um, what do you want to avoid? You want to avoid um, making decisions based on sexual energies outside of your relationship. Like you might have like a like a work wife or something, you know, where you're like kind of flirty with them. And it doesn't mean that you would engage with them, but it means that perhaps um you know, in doing so, in like flirting, and even though you're not going to cheat, 
you're you're creating kind of a rift between you and your partner because you're getting more emotionally from that, like as far as excitement and things. And when you're bored in your relationship this month, that could be something to look at. Now, another way that you would want to read that, that I could read this is, um, you know, maybe you're forcing yourself to be um, intimate on a sexual level with your partner this month, but it's devoid of really... Um, like emotion, you know, it's just like getting your rocks off quickly. Um, that is something you're going to want to avoid. Like if you don't want to have sex this month, don't, but you're at risk then of making your partner feel like you're not attracted to them. Um, so if you feel like I'm just stressed right now, I've got a lot on my plate, try to be open about that. Um, so that they don't think it's them because they are in confidence crisis. Remember, we talked about this. Um, and then the third way that I might read this is, um, where was I going with that? Oh, um, is to not avoid sexual relationships at all with your partner. Like, make sure that it is a priority for you, but but at a time and a place when you guys are kind of like, you're going to want to do this in a way like when you've just kind of bonded, okay? So instead of like obligatory sex right before bed, because that's your routine, that's what you always do, it's got to be like, we just ate dinner, we just talked about our day, I feel like we emotionally connected because we, you know, interacted, um, showed caring for each other about our day, now let's sneak off to the bedroom and make this exciting. Um it's that kind of a thing because the deep emotional bonding might be a little bit tr challenging. And so when you feel it, you got to take advantage of it. Um, and this is going to make your partner feel a lot more secure in your relationship. And I keep getting that this whole um, fire sign kind of energy with like a Leo or an Aries, maybe a Sagittarius, but I'm getting it more Leo Aries. So if you're a Libra with a Leo or Aries, um, particularly take this piece away from, from the reading. And it says that, you know, in the month of July, things are not going to necessarily totally shift and change overnight. But you know, like, try to just avoid um, feeling heartbroken, depressed, because these are circumstances outside of your control for the most part. Um, and they're like, you know, you don't have to talk about it. <laughs> Talking about it over and over is really going to stress your partner out, especially if they are in Aries, because they want to just avoid and kind of handle things on their own, you know, and whether they're successful at it or not, like you kind of just have to be a little bit passive. And now that's um, oftentimes a lot easier for Libras to do <laughs> than other signs. So, you know, you're skilled in that. And I'm not saying do this forever. Don't never bring it up. But in this month of July, just, um, you know, things that you can let slide, let them slide because your partner is kind of suffering. They're having a little bit of a hard time. And it's not something that they want to talk about, you know. It's just going to make them feel worse. It's going to make them feel like more of a loser. So be careful with that. Now, what can you do to increase these feelings of love and attraction and to grow love in the month of July with your partner? <laughs> Don't talk about things like that. Just, if you don't have to bring shit up, don't bring it up. Don't criticize them. They're like, you don't have to make any decisions. Um, this is not something that you really need to think about. It's not something that needs to be talked about this month. So at all costs, like kind of avoid that. Now, what is working for you in the month of July in regards to your relationship? Um, well, the fact that this person is going through this... Um, and that they're not really thinking about how they're investing in the relationship means that it's giving you the opportunity to really think, okay, what are the most important things to me? And, um, you know, how can I better focus on this relationship to lead by example? And maybe I don't feel 100% confident about this relationship anymore, but I am learning how to not create drama and then just see what the benefits of those rewards are. Like personally, I'm not a Libra. I'm um, a Leo with a Scorpio moon. So I can be quite dramatic. Like if I feel for a second that my partner's not 100% um, engaged, I'm going to flip. Okay, but I, I should take something away from this Libra page where maybe you just let them kind of process through their thing and all of a sudden they come back bigger and better because they learned those lessons on their own without somebody forcing them for them, right? Now, um, what's working against you this month? And it says just, you know, the speed at which things change. Things change overnight. Um, and, you know, maybe not 
maybe not um, kind of, excuse me, what? Um, you have swimming in 45 minutes, okay? Can you let me finish this, please? That was yummy, yummy. My apology. So I have five minutes. Go, Mom. Okay. Um, so, so what is working against you this month? Um, you might not be making a lot of affirmations or wishes or thinking about what it is that you want. Um, so maybe you're challenged then to think about the things that you do want within your relationship. Um, and that you want for yourself. This is actually a really good time to think about the things that you want for yourself aside from your relationship. Um, just because your partner has got their own personal work to do right now. And so this is saying, you know, um, definitely not tying yourself in and binding yourself to, you know, conversations or situations that are toxic. You're given the opportunity this month to do that kind of a self-reflection thing. And so um, what is the overall outcome for you? Oh, I like it, but I don't like it. <laughs> okay. So the overall outcome for you are um, a couple different scenarios because it is a general reading. Now, one scenario that might occur is that you just realize that you and your partner want different things. Okay, well, that would be a negative if you intended to spend your whole life with this person. But it could be a positive if you want to find somebody who's more aligned with you, right? Now, here's um, another scenario, because this is a general reading. You avoid the drama, okay, which has a blessing in that then you don't have to work through the drama. <laughs> and so maybe you don't get new ideas. Maybe you don't find your passion this month. But that's because it does take this time for things that are out of your control to kind of come back full circle. You know, the wheel... Where did that go? The Wheel of Fortune and the World, they're both circles. So it says, you know, sometimes, like, everything is changing. The change is the only thing that's constant. So maybe um, right now your partner's working through stuff. Your relationship is maybe changing and evolving, but it could be changing and evolving for the better, right? So let's not go throwing drama in there and, and adding, you know, layers of complicated bullshit on top of it that we're going to have to work through also. Now, another scenario as far as the outcome goes, you might just feel like, gosh, I, I'm not into this anymore. I don't have this love here anymore. And it feels hopeless to me. And, and you know, that feels unlucky, but this person was not my soulmate. Um, and so, yeah, like, I don't want to be single. Um, but I also don't want to be entirely selfless either. Like, I need to start thinking about me. And so this is all happening for a reason. So some of you are going to go through this process, and hopefully you'll avoid the drama with your partner. And in that time, you'll go and you'll do your own thing, and you'll kind of, and I'm not saying, like, cheat, you know, but you'll kind of, like, go out with friends, you'll pick up a hobby, and you're going to start to see what's important to you, what do you really want, and if that aligns with that, remember we had the Six of Cups a couple times, with things that you used to do in the past with your partner, you can bring those back, okay, you're going to remember your partner and what you loved about them and find a way to reconnect, or you're going to say, you know what, this person was good for me for this time in my life, but now it's time to move on. And so it's a split here. And I feel like the majority of you are going to find a way to look at this relationship and you're going to say, you know what, these are things that I used to love. And these are things that I want to um, do again. And I'm going to bring my partner into that and we're going to bond over it and we're going to fall back in love. Or, you know, they're going to work through this and our relationship is going to be stronger as a result because they'll appreciate me for giving them the time and the space. And I appreciate them because, you know, I'm showing them appreciation by not starting drama and because, um, you know, here I am where, where I've kind of done my own thing and it reminds me of, you know, my own individuality and what I want out of this relationship. I feel like more of you are, are leaning that way, but th and then there's going to be some of you maybe like 30% that say, you know what, this guy's just not for me anymore. This girl's just not for me anymore. And, but that's a blessing because then, you know, th for those people, and it might be closer to 20%, but for those people, if you're in that category, like you realize this isn't my soulmate. So now it is a blessing because you are going to be available to attract your actual soulmate. Okay, so what is the overall kind of lesson to focus on? And it says elevation. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
my apologies again. Sometimes these cards get really jumpy. Okay, but that's because they want to be heard. <laughs> Elevation. You're making the conscious decision to raise your vibration of love. Okay, so I am going to show a lot of love. I am going to feel a lot of love, and I'm going to do that either for myself, I'm going to do that for my partner, um, but I'm raising the vibration of love so that, you know, there's more love to go around, you know, as we move through July and into August. So I hope that makes sense the way that I explain that, but, you know, love of self, um, not always giving too much to our relationships when we're not receiving it. So I'm going to go do my own thing. And I'm going to love myself. And as I love myself more, my partner will love, therefore love me more, right? Because like attracts like, okay? So I hope you found that helpful. Love and light. And see you next time. Bye.